Hello there, this is part 3 of a DSR 068 oscilloscope and I'm gonna start with a small review what I think about it and I chose it because I wanted the case and the oscilloscope and a bit portable and I buy kits to build them and see if things go wrong so as you see my early videos it goes wrong for me. I have removed some uh, circuit board. I will might explain this in another video because I don't need these. I'm not using internal battery and I've only mounted one of the connections. The other connection up here is if I want to use this as a function generator to feed a signal out and I will never do that. I will use my transistor tester to test signals, pulse width emulation and uh, normal frequency generation and stuff like that. And well it works. It's not that expensive but it's it's not a real oscilloscope. It's a fun project and mine here I have some problems which I will explain in a bit of time and what I noticed is that my version here is functional up to 100 kilohertz somewhere around that. I will show you on my computer later how the signal looks and uh, I got an earlier comment from uh, a Russian guy Alex if that's your name. Uh, his was working up to 400 kilohertz and then the signal goes bananas. And the last problem I have right now is that I have a quite noisy signal and the noise is not coming from outside, it's something inside the oscilloscope that's making the noise stuff. But okay, I've built it for fun and I love when things doesn't go as I planned because then I have to troubleshoot and start thinking and maybe learn something. So, this video now is going to focus on connecting the oscilloscope to the computer and what you can do to that. So, sorry about the panning. I'm going to move the camera a bit. So, let's start uh, off with the simple thing, or simple and simple. Uh, you can do straight captures or the oscilloscope can just send over the waveform. I'm just going to turn on the waveform again because my transistor tester turns off. There we are. Uh, on the page, here we are. This is the JITEC, uh, DSO 066, the production page, or producer's page, and I'm gonna link it down below. If you scroll down a bit, you find documentation, where we are here, uh, capture uploading and waveform file format. There's a PDF file who explains what I'm doing here. It recommends uh, downloading the software TerraTerm, which basically is a serial port connection, so I can use X modem on old protocol to just dump over the information. And everything is explained in the PDF. The only thing you have to remember every time we, I sometimes forget is to check the setup, serial port, check is connected, and the baud rate, 115,200, 115, or it won't receive anything. So what I do, I'm going to move this little camera again, sorry for that. I'm here, I'm going to look that I have a signal, something nice to show. And I'm going to hit the adjust button, turn down to send wave data. So that's prepared. I'm going to jump over to computer again and use file, transfer, X modem and receive. And it, I already prepared a new folder for this and test2.csv that's comma separated value file I think it's supposed to mean so I start by hit the oscilloscope send wave data sending data and open and it receives and let's look what we have got here we have test2 and my earlier test and what you get is a text file with all the numbers uh, very boring and uh, Maybe some people will say not that, that useful because you have to calculate the data here and do have something with them. Here you have the waveform, it's a square wave, you see numbers go up and down. Nothing strange. The funny thing is that I have much more stable numbers here when there's on my screen, so that shows me that the noise I have on my little thing here is something else. So 
That's that. That's just transferring it wave. But now over to the fun part. Using the uh, DSR 068 as a USB oscilloscope. It's a bit explained on the page. If you go, let's see where I can find it again. First of all, you have to download under support documents and tool virtual COM pod driver for UART USB bridge with CP210X. That's the, the bridge inside. This is the first thing you have to do, and that's uh, let's see, my little sheet paper. It's a zip file, you download it, you open it, there's an installation program which you run, and then that program in turn installs the driver for the serial port or COM port. Nothing strange about that, just let it run. It will ask you questions normally. Then you have to download Gilab. That's the software for work as USB scope with Gilab and data logger and blah blah blah, a lot of text. Gilab is here and you have to download it. Uh, the only thing, a small problem I have that is download Gilab here and it pops up. Version 0.70 is what I'm using. It's a RAR file, R-A-R, -R, which is, is a, I think, quite old compression system. So to install it or to open it up, I used 7-zip, there's other software to extract the files with. And when you're extracting, it's not in the program you have to install. The only thing you do, you extract the program to a folder and it contains everything. And there's a Gilab program is over there. So, install the driver, download the software, and then you can open the software. And my function generator has turned off again. I'm going to turn it on again. So, here we have the program. I'm going to maximize it. Uh, and mm, I don't know if my screen size makes this program go nuts because part of the program is below, below the bar on the Windows 10. But okay, it works. Now we're gonna find our little, so here, our little USB oscilloscope. Uh, port setup, check for your port, mine is COM3. If you can't find COM3 the first time I couldn't find my port, pull to the right and there's a rescan button. And then you pull down and we'll go. Then it works hopefully and we're gonna go to capture and connect. And after that, we're gonna hit run. Now it gets a bit noisy because of that. And now let's see, oh, it's with on time base. And uh, now you can adjust the time base inside the software here. So we're gonna need something like, ah, we start to, you see my, my, the wave is wobbling all over it. I don't know how much you can see. You can turn off a bit of a light here. So maybe you can see better. And if you want to change the input, you can manipulate the switches on the oscilloscope itself. And you're going to get, as you see, change of input signals and there's numbers change and it's nothing strange. Uh, and here you also have a save function, which is the same thing as send waveform from the oscilloscope to a computer. You can choose save and it will ask you to Put in a name file and oh again a CSV file, comma separated value file, nothing strange about that. And yeah, that's it. Now it's a bit wobbly, but now you can see if that's 10, 10 kilohertz, so we're gonna snap it to 25, 50, and we're gonna change the time base so we can look at that. Now you start to see the curve, it starts to not being a square wave anymore. It might be my function generator that's not the best thing, but I think it's the oscilloscope that starts to go a bit nuts. If we hit 100, you see it goes really bad, 153, and 500, or 250 kilohertz. Uh, well, it starts to be not that beautiful, but it works. For me, it's okay, because I will not use this for these high frequencies. And, uh, and also one thing, remember, do not use this oscilloscope on live voltage from the mains. Use it on a small electronic projects. Don't be stupid. So that's it.
not that strange and it might take a while and it's like most DIY projects you have to work back and forth to get everything to work as you want so if you're building this good luck and I think you get a better signal than I have because I've seen people do this and they have a much better signal than me so good luck and see you